गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ प्रोफेसर संगीता मेनन एंड टीम नेया सी एस पी आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर अनादर फ्राइडे लेक्चर सो लाइक ईच फ्राइडे वी ब्रिंग टू यू न्यू स्पीकर एंड इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक सो फॉर टूडेज लेक्चर वी हैव गुरु रंजन प्रणाम सर विद अस टूडे सो ही इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग आर्ट फॉर्म so before a further ado i'll request meera kumar menon to introduce him and also talk about the topic meera over to you thank you niharika uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you sir uh, guru ranjan mularat is an artistic director and producer of the award winning uh, award winning film dehi as a child he was attracted to kalri pait and started this with his parents he then trained seriously under sri pk balan who is one of Uh, the legendary gurukuls of uh, kalari from kerala he is now a kalari master and head of the kalari gurugulam at bangalore uh, in an effort to popularize kalari paita as an art form he has led many performances at cultural events given lecture demonstrations and conducted programs to create awareness of the martial arts among youth he has held he has had the privilege to personally perform at prestigious events such as the french festival latitudes will load de sud and olympic uh, council of asia at kuwait he also uh, authored a book on kalri paita called kalari margam ancient secrets to modern living so we have a very prominent person among us we are looking forward to hear from you sir please thank you um, thank you very much for inviting me for this next uh, demonstration program uh, we are very glad to present kalri paita to, to this wonderful audience and uh, thank you ani hariya thank you mira and uh, sangeeta ma'am thank you very much and ani yes also thank you very much so um, let me start with the presentation and uh, today i am going to talk about kalari pait kalari pait is uh, one of the ancient martial art form of india mm -hmm. it is the origin of many wonderful art forms many of these art forms are meant to understand oneself and to have awareness with the universe martial art kalari pait is also one such art form it is me meant to understand yourself and connect yourself with the universe uh, the rough introduction about kalari pait kalari pait is considered to be the most ancient existing martial art in the world it is the mother of all martial arts it's believed kalari pait is originated maybe 5000 years sir i am sorry to bother you sir sir can we uh, speak a louder like yeah can okay. we try uh, can i yeah hello yes sir uh, i'm i'm audible now right yes sir now you're right thank you okay so i think yes. the this one uh, so about kare pait um, a buddhist monk called bodhi dharma Uh, he learned kalari pait uh, from india he was an expert in kalari pait and then he took this art form to china and his teaching has become the foundation of uh, many other martial art forms so that's why kalari pait is called as the mother of all martial arts um, originally kalari pait was a war form and um, it is practice it is a practice of kalari pait that saved many of uh, our warriors during many wars in ancient time for example uh, the raja of parsi parsi raja he has used uh, kalari pait in his war form and uh, he could uh, fight the britishers for a uh, long time and britishers found it is difficult to uh, fight against parsi raja and he stopped kalari pait he banned kalari pait in kerala even the even using of uh, weapons he has the british has uh, stopped uh, for more than a decade of time and kalari uh, pait uh, is also used in chola and uh, chera war also kalari uh, pait in india is uh, as old as vedas in ancient times kalari pait was used to build a warrior in you so when we say warrior uh, warriors are not just for fighting uh, it is not like uh, they just go kill people and come back uh, they are the most disciplined uh, and uh, focused people because uh, you know in uh, puranas or um, vedas uh, there are 
lot of uh, uh, wars happened, and in this war, they have a lot of formations. Like uh, you must be knowing about Padma Vyuha, Chakra Vyuha, and all. This war formation, they uh, build in a short time during the war itself. So these are the complicated choreographies they made inside the war. These are the war strategies or war formations uh, they have to execute inside the war itself. This is to protect themselves and protect the uh, surrounding too. So they are they were the most disciplined and focused people, the warriors, and Kalpine is to uh, train them to make them as focused and uh, make them as uh, strength and flexibility kind of thing. So the uh, training of Kalpine have divided into three parts. The first part is yoga and meditation. Yoga and meditation is uh, meditation is to bring focus to the trainer, and yoga is to bring the flexibility and uh, cool their mind. And the second part is about the healing. Kalipat has its own healing uh, method. It is more um, related to Ayurveda um, and Indian uh, medicine. And the third part is only the self defense part. This is the introduction about clarified, and uh, I think I can go to the next topics. Uh, the next topic I'm going to talk about is uh, clarified and its meaning. Uh, before talking about the meaning, I would like to uh, talk about the principle of clarified. Mm -hmm. There's three principles in clarified. One is elimination, second is the creation, and the third one is the maintenance. Uh, elimination also means cleansing cleansing of your body, cleansing of your mind. It could be uh, elimination of your ego, mm, ego like that. And the second part is the creation. Creation could be uh, positive or negative. Uh, the creation comes naturally if the elimination is done. It's a natural process uh, because um, if uh, the cleansing is happened uh, from our side. Only the positive creation happens. That is the belief in clarified. And the third is maintenance. Uh, maintenance is uh, the continuous practice of clarified. The day by day, the day to day practice of clarified is called maintenance. So there are three principles the elimination, creation, and maintenance. And the elimination is the first part. Without the elimination or without the cleansing of your body and mind, we don't even uh, start initiate the clarified. This elimination could be done by uh, diet. We use uh, uh, different herbs and then massage and exercises. Once we've done that, the creation of the body and the mind happens naturally. So the word clarified, the word kalari means elimination of unwanted things. It could be from your body and or it could be from the uh, from the mind. And Paito means the training. So uh, the word uh, Karal Paito literally means uh, training uh, of or cleansing the body and mind. It's about the um, meaning of Karal Paito. And uh, now I would like to go to the next uh, topic. The next topic is about uh, the style different styles exist in clarified. Mm -hmm. There was three styles. Uh, mm, traditionally, there was three styles in clarified uh, that uh, based on the region, such as Northern clarified uh, style, Southern clarified style, and the Central style of clarified. These are the three styles existed from uh, ancient time. And in this, uh, the northern style is more northern and southern styles are more popular, but the central style is not that popular. It has um, evolved uh, very recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference, it is more, uh, the styles are more um, classified uh, depending upon the region than the style and then the technique. But there are common uh, differences in the techniques also. Usually, in Northern style, um, 
is believed uh, to have originated from Parashurama. Parashurama is the creator of uh, North India, and the southern style is uh, uh, traced back to Sage Agastya. In each style, there are many main divisions based on the technique. Like uh, Kalpati is thought as a parampara. Parampara means uh, the tradition or the family to family, generation to generation. So each family, uh, they had uh, their own uh, secrets or uh, learning techniques uh, with them. And these techniques, they teach only to their family or to their generation. And to the other families, they have different styles and different techniques or different uh, secrets of Kalajit Bayatu. So they all have kept uh, different secrets uh, or particular secrets of Kalajit Bayatu. And there are a lot of uh, um, styles exist in Kalajit Bayatu. So these are the um, main points about uh, different styles in Kalajit Bayat. And um, in Northern style, again, uh, they give more importance for the preparation of the body. Mm, it is then, it's called, uh, there is a secret of exercise called May Pait. May means body, Pait means practice. So the May Pait or May Adakam or the practice of body uh, is the main practice of the body and mind, the preparation of the body and mind is the main uh, in uh, Northern style of Kalari Pait. And it has a graded system of learning. But in southern style, it's a martial art. More, more, more importance given to the uh, martial art or the self-defense techniques. So I hope you are following me. Uh, able to follow me. And uh, yes, let, me go to, yeah. let me go to the next topic. Mm, the next topic is uh, origin of the point and its uh, stage of, stages of evolution. So uh, the history of Kalaripayat is, uh, uh, Kalaripayat is a very old uh, martial art form. It has been more than 5,000 years old. So uh, that means uh, it doesn't have a uh, written history of Kalaripayat. But mythologically, we believe Shiva as the creator of Kalaripayat. He is the Adi Guru, or he is the first guru, first master of Kalaripayat. From him, uh, Parashurama learned this art form and Parashurama got this art form to the land. That is the mythological uh, belief of Kalaripayat about the history. But uh, the his historians say uh, that our ancestors watched, observed and learned from their surroundings, uh, mostly from animals, the animals, uh, their hunting uh, tactics and their movements. They practice their, uh, the animal tactics or the animal instinct uh, themselves. And this practice becomes the foundation of uh, Kalari Paitu. That is the belief from the, his, uh, the historians, uh, the history. And that is how Kalari Paitu uh, evolved in the forest. As it evolved in the forest, uh, people were, I mean, the ancestors were watching the um, animals and they uh, were not using any weapons in the beginning because the animals they never used the weapons and uh, later on they adopted the uh, wooden weapons they could get uh, wood from the forest and this uh, wood they use it as uh, uh, weapons so the wooden weapons introduced to the color later on um, uh, uh, after the discovery of uh, metal, they introduced the metal weapons into Kalaripayat. So it was an like evolution of Kalaripayat. It is not just uh, originated Kalaripayat in one particular time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kalaripayat even uh, used uh, to fight with Britishers and many, uh, it has used in war. Uh, after independence, Kalaripayat has recognized as a sport by the government of Kerala. Again, uh, those days, it was uh, mandatory uh, to send all the children above the age of seven to Kalaripayat. it. And um, Kalaripayat is more popular in India. It has more than 500 schools in Kerala itself. 
and it is also popular in um, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Hyderabad, etc. And colored pipe has spread outside India too. There are colored pipe classes conducted in Germany, France, Russia, etc. And every year uh, they conduct uh, colored pipe championship. A uh, lot of people uh, all over from India they participate. Around thousand students participated in the last year championship. So this is about the origin of clarified and its stages of evolution. And um, may I go to the next uh, topic. Uh, the next topic is um, the cultural value of clarified. Um, clarified has a um, time-tested set of practice system and uh, well-defined uh, regimen. It uh, features incremental levels of training from beginners to expert level. It's not just about uh, some set of uh, or some uh, sequence of punches or kicks. Uh, it is more than that. There's a lot more in cultivate. It helps to find the essence of uh, your own being and expressing that essence. Uh, that is cultivate. So um, you can uh, the cultural value of clarified. Clarified, you can see it as a sport. Uh, clarified has uh, its own scoring system and uh, a lot of competitions. And so clarified is, you can uh, see it as a sport. Uh, clarified is also as a martial art form. Uh, people are learning, many people are learning, and uh, mostly the girls are learning clarified too for self defense purpose. And uh, clarified. Uh, Again, it's a physical, you can use it uh, as a physical fitness or health and for health and wellness. Uh, many people uh, learn clarified to improve their health, improve their stamina, improve their flexibility, improve their focus, etc. like that. And there are many uh, dancers learn clarified. It, they, for them, it's a movement art. Uh, the uh, dancers learn clarified to, to improve their flexibility and uh, improve their um, way of expressing, etc. And there are many school students also learn clarified to strengthen their mental equity and the inner self. So they can improve their concentration. They uh, learn it to improve the um, focus and the attention span, etc. And um, these are the main uh, highlights of clarified. Uh, maybe uh, to understand more, uh, I can share my own uh, experience in Clarified, my story my, of uh, Clarified uh, uh, to you maybe. I am from a small village uh, from Kerala, uh, near Guruvayu, and uh, I started Clarified in a very young age. Uh, my parents introduced me to Clarified. Uh, but uh, the basic principle of clarified, but he, they never thought clarified it to me. Uh, they put me into under a guru, my guru is uh, uh, Mr. Balan Gurukal. Under uh, Balan Gurukal, I started learning clarified. Mm -hmm. Why I started learning clarified? Uh, because uh, I, uh, it was a fashion to say that I am also learning clarified, I am also learning martial art. That is the main reason I started Clarified. I didn't know much about Clarified because you see uh, in movies, films and all, uh, they do a lot of fightings. Uh, I also wanted to do that kind of thing. Uh, so let me clarify, uh, to say that uh, to my friends, just to say to my friend, I'm also learning Clarified, it was like fashion. That's the main reason I started Clarified. But when I practice further, further, uh, when I reached the high school uh, level, um, I the, mm, the purpose of calorie, learning calorie has changed. It maybe it became a passion, and uh, in my high schools, nobody knows, nobody even knew that I was learning calorie fight. So even though I started learning calorie fight just to see my friends, to say to my friends that I am uh, also learning martial art. After learning clarified, the trans transformation happened to me, and I not even uh, told any of my friends that I am learning clarified. So that is the 
a change happened to me. And then in 1999, I came to Bangalore and started uh, teaching Kalaji Payet. After teaching Kalaji Payet, I understood uh, Kalaji Payet is not uh, just for a performance, not just for uh, a practice. It is to realize yourself, your inner being. Um, to practice Kalaji Payet or to perform Kalaji Payet, and you yourself witness Kalaji Payet. Uh, that was the um, uh, we say shanti or the bliss of uh, the mind I could feel. Uh, so that is transformation happened to me. Um, so I was I just thought of uh, sharing uh, my experience of Kalaji Payet with you. Hope you enjoyed it. I mean, hope you. Uh, could understand, uh, could have a better understanding of Kalipayat. So Kalipayat is a uh, complete martial arts system that combines physical strength, mental acuity, and disciplined life. Uh, it adopts the essence of traditional Indian medicine and Ayurveda, meditation, and yoga. That's the highlights and the value of, of uh, Kalipayat. And, uh, uh, the next topic, the influence of Kalaripayat in other uh, art forms. Mm -hmm. There are many uh, South Indian art forms influenced by Kalaripayat. Uh, for example, uh, the, it has influenced uh, uh, the uh, Kadagali itself. Uh, Kadagali is the uh, dance drama of uh, Kerala. Uh, even the Kadagali artists, they use uh, Kalaripayat, they have incorporated Kalaripayat movements into their system. The basic exercise is mainly uh, for flexibility. And uh, they also use um, the same kind of massage techniques uh, where Kalari practitioners use. The, it's called Chavati Vichal. Uh, the um, uh, purpose of Chavati Vichal is uh, to bring flexibility and uh, more agility of the body. And we, uh, it is different from Abhyanga or the usual massage. The usual massage uh, is uh, the pressure is given with the hands. But in Chavati Vichil, uh, the pressure is given by the foot of the guru or the master. The master uh, give the pressure with the feet itself and then massage with the leg. Uh, that is the Chavati Vichya. That is there in Kalaripayat. You can see it in Kalaripayat. And uh, this particular kind of Chavati Vichya, you can see it in Kathakari also. Mm. The uh, other art form is Tayyam. Even in Tayyam, uh, Kalaripayat has influence. There are many similarities and uh, uh, use of uh, fighting techniques in Tayyam also. And uh, we all already have discussed about uh, uh, Bodhidharma. Uh, in the 13th century, um, the Kalipayat expert uh, is uh, Bodhidharma, took this art form to China and uh, it's become, the, his teachings become the foundation of many, arch, many martial art forms. So Kalipayat has influenced uh, almost all the martial art forms which exist now. And uh, uh, Kalipayat also, is, uh, you can see many contemporary dancers use uh, Kalaripayat in their styles. Uh, for even Pastor uh, Devu and Chandra Lega, the senior contemporary uh, dancers, they use Kalaripayat in their performances and they adopt the techniques of Kalaripayat into their art form too. So these are the evidence of uh, even, uh, other uh, Kalaripayat has influenced in other art forms too. And um, the next topic we are talking, uh, we are going to talk about is the preparation of the body and uh, main sadhana. Uh, the uh, preparation of the body is the first stage in Kalaripayat. Mm, even uh, we start the preparation of the body and mind before initiating to Kalaripayat. Initiate to Kalaripayat is a process. It's a, uh, it's a tradition. And before that, uh, the trainer has to undergo uh, 14 days of massage. And uh, in this massage time, they follow a particular diet and uh, 
mm -hmm. they have to undergo uh, exercises too. Once they are ready for, to start clarified, uh, then they uh, initiate into clarified and then start with the salutation. Salutation is again a uh, meditation uh, process. It's, it's a meditation movement, so the sequence of movements, uh, with yogic movement, which improve your mind and then uh, the physical skills also. That is the initia initiation to clarified. Once you initiate to clarified, uh, you will be learning about Mipayat. Mipayat is again a preparation of the body. Uh, we give, uh, uh, in Mipayat, we give more importance to strength, flexibility, stamina, etc. There are 18 uh, such sequences in Mipayat. So we start from the first sequence and second sequence and then the training touch it to the next sequence. Like that, there are 18 sequences we uh, practice uh, the make bite. And then there are 18 hand techniques. The hand techniques are mainly to improve, improve the speed and the strength of your hands. And then even though we say hand techniques, there are kicks involved in it. Sorry. So that is the make bite or the preparation of the body is the first stage in the current bite. And once you get into a certain um, level of uh, training, the body, the strength, stamina, etc., the physical skills, then the um, uh, practitioner is introduced to the next stage. The second stage of uh, culinary practice is the Kothari. Kothari is uh, the use of uh, uh, wooden weapons. There are uh, many wooden weapons we use in culinary practice. We start with the uh, long stick. The long stick is uh, six feet length uh, and uh, made of cane. Uh, there are a lot of, um, uh, there are 18 sequence to use the uh, long stick. And uh, uh, we have the second weapon, the short stick. Short stick is uh, two feet length. And um, we have the maze, the curved stick. These are the main wooden weapons we learn in the Kothari. And the third stage is called Angatari. Angatari is uh, uh, the use of metal weapons. Uh, in Angatari, you will learn how to use uh, the knife, uh, dagger, uh, the spear, sword and shield. And Urmi. Urmi is the uh, most dangerous weapon in Kaldi system. It is a uh, coil like, spring like uh, weapon and it is six feet in length. And uh, that is the third stage of Kalaripayat. And uh, the fourth stage, fourth stage is called Varumkai. Varumkai is uh, called the empty-handed fighting techniques. So that is like if somebody comes with weapons, how do you handle it? How to disarm, uh, disarm your opponent? These are the techniques you'll be learning in the Varumkai system. And the last stage is the fifth stage is called the Marma treatment. Uh, Marma treatment is, uh, Marma is more like uh, the vital points in the body, more like uh, the acupuncture, the acupuncture points or acupressure points in the Chinese medicine system. Uh, it is more related to chakras uh, of our body and uh, the prana. Prana is the vital energy of the body. So by balancing the prana and the physical strength, uh, you can live in a better life or uh, you can uh, treat uh, yourself in a better state. That is the marma uh, uh, therapy or the fifth stage of Kalipayat. So the, basically it is, um, it's a step-by-step uh, -step process. We start with the uh, physical exercises, uh, meditation, and then the trainer would, goes to introduce to weapons, and then finally the healing, the, uh, the medicine of uh, cultivate is introduced to them. And the next topic is uh, construction of cultivate the place where we practice. Uh, the uh, traditional training of clarified is conducted 
in an enclosure called Kalari. Kalari is like an earth chamber. That means uh, it is uh, made under the ground, six feet under the ground, uh, under the ground level, uh, using mud and earthy elements. And we use only the mud and earthy elements because to maintain the temperature throughout the year. And there's particular uh, dimensions for clarified. Uh, it has its own vastu, like the clarified is supposed to be 42 feet in length and 21 feet in width. And uh, also there are three types of kalari. The place we practice is called kalari and the art form is called clarified. So uh, kalari has, there are three types of kalari. This is the normal kalari or the practice kalari. And there is some kalari called cheru kalari. Cheru kalari is uh, smaller dimension compared to the normal kalari. So why they use Chiru Kalari is for more meditation and uh, puja purpose. And the uh, third one is Anga Kalari. Anga Kalari is uh, double the size of the normal Kalari and there the fighting, the real fighting challenge uh, or the fight happens in the Anga Kalari. So there are, these are the three uh, types of Kalari and um, uh, uses uh, the place. And the Kalari entrance always face east. Uh, it is to bring the uh, sunlight inside Kalari. And uh, uh, there are seven type platform at the southwest corner of Kalari. The seven steps um, symbolize the seven chakras of uh, our body, the uh, seven chakras uh, of uh, maybe yoga. This is about the construction of Kalari and um, about the costume we use. Um, I think I have a um, PowerPoint, uh, the first uh, slide. If you could share it, uh, it will be, it will be great. Uh, not that one, before the, the first slide. Yeah. Um, so this is the uh, traditional costume we use in Kalari Payet. Uh, it is called the Kacha. Uh, kacha means it is um, uh, uh, made of cotton cloth and 27 feet long and one foot width. And this is wrapped around the waist or the stomach. It is to tighten the hip, uh, mainly to improve the uh, Manipuraka Chakra. Uh, it is um, uh, it is to uh, hold the prana, the life energy of the practitioner. And this is the costume we usually use uh, uh, in Kalari Pait. But now uh, again, the modern dresses, modern costumes are introduced to Kalari Pait. But this is the uh, traditionally we use kacha, uh, which is twenty-seven feet long and uh, one foot. Yeah, the, uh, for the time being, that's enough. Uh, the, that comes uh, in a later stage uh, when we talk about the posture. Uh, now uh, we have the topic about the Vaitari. Uh, there is no music uh, involved in Kalari Pait. In the traditional Kalari Pait, we don't use any uh, music. Uh, but uh, while practicing, uh, the Guru will be giving uh, verbal comments throughout. So we'll be listening the Guru's verbal comment. The verbal comment is uh, uh, more uh, like Malayalam, but not the uh, pure Malayalam. It is more uh, mixed with Tamil and Sanskrit. And uh, this Vaitari is used uh, um, as a rhythm of the practitioner than instruction. So the Vaitari is the rhythm and that is the rhythm we follow while we practice. And there is no other musical, uh, any, uh, uh, any other rhythm followed. So the next uh, topic is uh, important of uh, body posture in movement. Uh, so I said uh, 
Kalpite is evolved from uh, the animal uh, positions. There are eight uh, such animal positions uh, we learn in Kalpite. And when people used to live in the forest, they had to uh, fight with the animals for their survival. And then they learned this uh, fighting techniques from the animals and then they imitated the animal techniques and uh, they learned the animal tactics. That's given the foundation. And uh, these eight animal uh, poses still exist. This is the foundation. This is the basic exercise, basic uh, uh, postures we use throughout coloring fight. So the first um, uh, animal pose is the wild boar. Uh, can I have that uh, second slide, please? Yeah, uh, so uh, the first pose is called Varaha. Varaha is uh, the wild boar. Uh, the peculiarity in wild boar is it can, uh, while moving, it has a flexibility. Like uh, it, uh, uh, it expands and shrinks the body. So it uh, shrinks the body and expands. That is the um, skill from the Varaha we have taken. And while moving, it attacks with the uh, we attack with the elbow, uh, like uh, imitating the wild boar pose. And uh, the next uh, pose is uh, gaja. Gaja is uh, the elephant pose. Uh, the skill, uh, the elephant, the skill from the elephant pose is the strength. We use the strength from the animal, like um, the steadiness or. Um, uh, the force the, is uh, the importance in Kecha body work. is the posture in the Kecha. Uh, this is the Kecha posture, elephant posture. And the third pose is Marjara. Marjara is the cat, uh, the wild cat or the tiger or cat. Uh, the importance of the cat posture is uh, the cat is. Uh, um, well known for the breath control. It can jump from any height and it lands safely. So this landing techniques and the breath control um, has uh, adopted from the Marcha Revadipo. And the fourth one is uh, Simha. Uh, the Simha or the lion pose. Uh, Simha is capable of protection as well as destruction. Uh, the lion pose is uh, the focus has adopted from the lion force and the uh, uh, instinct of protection or the destruction also is adopted from the lion force. And the next one is Sapa. Uh, Sapa is the snake. Uh, snake can uh, turn any direction and uh, attack its opponent. Uh, the snake is uh, more uh, um, like flexibility. We have adopted the skill of flexibility from the snake in Calorified because it can turn in any direction. And the next one is Kukuda. Kukuda is uh, the rooster. The rooster pose, uh, you can see it can, uh, it uses every part of this body while attacking. Like uh, it uses its wings, uh, it uses its neck, it uh, uses its legs and claws. Uh, so that, uh, like the same way, when we attack a person or attack for opponent, we also use uh, every part of our body uh, in this uh, fighting. So that is about Kukuda. And the next uh, uh, animal pose is uh, Mayura. Mayura means uh, peacock. Uh, peacock is uh, more graceful and uh, uh, balance, balancing of body and mind, uh, even though it attacks by jumping and flying. So Mayura is, the peacock is more uh, learning the balancing uh, skill. And the last one is the horse uh, or Ashwa. Uh, the, Important of the Ashwa posture or the horse pose is the, uh, the horse can hold the strength 
strength central link and to leap and run fast. Uh, so this leap and the run has erupted from the hose, holding the strength centrally to the stomach. Uh, so this is the eight animal poses which uh, we'll be uh, learning in the beginning. And uh, we'll be using all these uh, eight animal poses throughout the country, like even in the weapon fighting, we will be using these postures. And we'll have the live demonstration, you can understand the uh, uses of each animals, uh, each animal poses while they uh, attack or defend themselves. So the next topic again is, uh, I think the, that's the last uh, topic. Uh, it is uh, the use of uh, the current part in the present day. Uh, how qualified is used, how it is useful in the present day. Um, unlike earlier days, qualified today finds more followers uh, even outside India. Mm. There are a uh, lot of followers in India and uh, outside India also. This is evident in uh, uh, many cultural events uh, conducted uh, international, internationally. Um, even outside India. So we also are invited uh, by uh, international programs from outside. And there are a lot of cultural exchange programs happening. And uh, uh, people from West are visiting uh, India to learn these techniques and skill. They come and stay here for uh, one month, six months, even one year or so. They live with the guru and learn the art form. They are more interested and dedicated to learn it. And um, they learn as the Gurugula Sampradaya itself. Uh, so these are the evidence that uh, you know, clarified is uh, more popular even outside India. And uh, uh, no more clarified is uh, used in war forms. Uh, in, you know, in this scenario, you know, fitness and the stress management in the call of today's world. And uh, people are looking for alternate form uh, from the boring treadmill and gym exercise regime. And at present, uh, calorie uh, has a very good impact in our society, and it is very uh, demanding in today's lifestyle. Uh, they conduct uh, national championships every year and uh, throughout the country, uh, uh, from almost all the states, people are, uh, students are participating into that. So basically, that uh, uh, now is uh, growing beyond its martial art form. Uh, it's a characteristic five techniques, physical exercise and mental discipline are being adopted by international dancers, theater artists and film personalities to gain flexibility, split second of uh, reflexes and to develop presence of mind and confidence. So it's a uh, wholesome program towards personal development designed to strengthen the body and uh, sharpen the mind. Uh, so these are the topics I wanted to discuss. And uh, we have a live performance also. So the live performance is uh, we have the traditional kalari. I again, introduce you to the traditional kalari. And then uh, can I take you to the kalari place? Can I move the camera? Uh, this is the place where we practice and um, as I said it is uh, under the ground level. Uh, it is more than six feet under the ground and I am entering to the gallery. And entrance is towards the east and this is the putara. 
as I said, uh, this is the place where we keep uh, all the lamps and then do the salutation. And uh, we have some weapons. Uh, this is the sword and shield. And um, uh, this is the Urumi. The Urumi is uh, again six feet in length and it is flexible and uh, it's a foil blade actually. And this is the uh, dagger we use. And this is the short stick. And uh, this is the mace. And we have the curved stick, which is called the water pole. And uh, there's the long stick. And uh, we have the artist. And I would like to introduce them. Uh, there is uh, Ubasana. Namaste. Uh, she, they were the national champions from last uh, five years. And uh, this is uh, Irinad. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my son. Uh, he is learning gallery from last uh, three, four years. And Ubasana was learning gallery from past uh, ten, years. 10 years. And this is Shini. Uh, she is my wife. And uh, she also teaches Kalari Pyat here in Bangalore. Uh, she helped me teaching Kalari Pyat. And uh, we are uh, going to start the Kalari Pyat performance. Uh, I'm going to start Kalari Pyat, uh, the presentation with the salutation, where I'll be giving the Vaithari, along with the Vaithari. Vaithari is the verbal command. Uh, we give while practicing. Okay, so can I close the door, please? Uh, too much light coming. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are going to start the performance now. Kaito the Martin Vichy. It other Vichy will in here. Walat nada mazur tu benda ni. Kay kupit tuh tu. Walat gudi. Walat terus walat tu mbil cuti. Ida tu gudi. Ida terus ida tu mbil cuti. Kai gudti padi ni ramah, murtu dorte, muri padu dorte, kai nanti nugu pitu dorte, kuti bandai cie, murtu dorte, muri padu dorte, kai nanti nugu pitu dorte, kuti bandai cie, murtu dorte, muri padu dorte. Kain yang cincuk pitu ada, kuti bannya cie, tortu bannya cie, kai kuti bumi kibati. Nubar na, kai kupi pitu ada, walat nada na tortu bannya cie. Kai kupi pitu ada. Wala beron diri nya. Ida tu mala tu nada nado tu mana cie. Kai kupit tu ada. Wala beron diri nya. Ida tu mala tu nada nado tu mana cie. Kai kupit tu ada, balat kupit tu ada marna.
Yeah. So this is the solution we practice or we begin the calorie uh, with the solution every day. And uh, the second uh, uh, thing we are going to do is the animal poses, uh, the Ashtabadiva, the eight animal poses. And um, yeah, um, your light is too much there. Can you please move? No, still. Go a little more back, maybe. Yeah. And your right side. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, the first one we are going to show is the wild boar pose. It is called Varaha. Start. So this is uh, Varaha or the wild boar pose. And uh, the second one is the elephant Gaja. This is the elephant pose. And the third one is the cat, Marchara. And the next one is uh, the lion or Simha. So this is the lion pose. And the next one is Sarpa or the snake. The snake pose and from snake we are going to move the rooster this is the rooster pose kokuda and after kokuda it is the uh, peacock mayura this is the peacock pose and the last one is the horse Higher. Yeah, this is the final pose of the horse. These are the eight poses we usually practice. And uh, once you learn the poses, then next stage you will be learning the tactics. Tactics is like how you use the animal poses in real life or real incidents. So this is uh, a combination of attack or blocks using the same uh, animal poses. So uh, I'll be, we'll be showing some of the animal tactics today uh, for you to have a better understanding. So, Basna, can you show me uh, some of the animal tactics, any one animal tactics, which one you would like to show? Wild boar. Wild boar, okay. So, Basna is going to show you the wild boar tactics uh, now. So in the wild boar tactics, usually in each ta tactics, uh, usually you will be turning uh, all the directions. Uh, in Karajiri, we have eight direction. In each direction, you will be turning and then practicing the attack or defense. As I said, the wild boar, uh, while moving it, expand and then contract the body and then attack with the elbow. The same thing is shown here also. 
okay very good uh, so this is the wild boar tactics and uh, now um, irina is going to show you uh, the next animal tactics which animal tactics irina you would like to show elephant elephant okay irina is going to show the elephant tactics now this is the elephant pose and uh, he'll be doing few attacks from the yeah the defense So here the strength is given more importance. Each step he'll be uh, doing it more stable. Can I see it one more time, please, Sadinath? Yeah. So that's the elephant tactics. And uh, the next one is, uh, uh, Shini is going to show you some animal tactics. So which one is this? Rooster. rooster. She's going to show you the rooster pose. Rooster tactic. Yeah, one more time, please. Okay, uh, that's the rooster pose. So this is um, about the animal tactics and animal poses. I hope you had a better understanding with this live uh, performance. And um, now we are going to uh, show you some more advanced uh, uh, body training exercise. I said 18 exercise we have in that uh, Maypite. One such uh, sequence of exercise I am going to show you. Uh, Irina is going to show you. So start. So this is uh, from Maypite, one sequence. Like this, uh, we have 18 sequences. And now uh, we are going to show you some of the hand techniques. It is called uh, Chuwadu. This also, uh, we have 18 sequences. Uh, from the 18 sequences, they are going to show you some of the uh, basic sequences. This again, uh, practice to get uh, more uh, power speed uh, uh, while uh, executing that absorb block. This is more like a uh, bare hand uh, or uh, practice without hand, oh, sorry, without weapons technique. Okay, so this would we are going to show. Start.
So now uh, what I witnessed is the Chivoda and uh, in Chivoda they did uh, the first three and uh, uh, five and six I think. And now uh, we are going to do the uh, long stick uh, swinging sequence by Aryanath. Start with the salutation and then do the swinging. This is the long stick sequence, uh, the swinging sequence. Like this, we have the fighting sequence also. And the next one, uh, we are going to do the sword and shield fight sequence. This is a choreographed sequence. Uh, like this, we have 18 sequences. Uh, from that 18 sequence, one of the sequence, they're going to demonstrate it for you. Actually, they take the weapons with uh, much respect with the salutation. Okay. I think I had to move a little further. Yeah. Okay, ready? And uh, start. Yeah, uh, that's the sword and shield sequence. And uh, with this, we have completed the uh, live performance. And uh, I think if you have any questions, you can ask. Thank you so much, sir. That was truly- Thank you, it is our pleasure. I, I don't have words right now. So uh, the floor is open to questions, any, uh, you know, any comments, discussion. 
So we already have one question. Uh, I think Maggie has left, uh, but she asked a question. Is there any age limit to start learning culinary? Uh, six years. Six years. Yeah, about six years, anybody can learn culinary. Okay. Um, yeah. Sudarshan, sir, do you want to ask your question? Can I unmute you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you do it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's, there's this uh, firstly wonderful talk, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so there is this wonderful, uh, there, there is this uh, uh, idea of no kumarmam, which I have heard in uh, um, in this art style, and it's it's a sort of controversy to the people say it's uh, like it's not possible. But I have heard uh, people even demonstrate in Kerala of the possibilities. Is this really true that uh, through the eyesight one can reduce or increase the blood pressure of a person of an opponent? Um, as you said, uh, it is still an uncertain and uh, we can't uh, say anything about it. Uh, you know, it is, uh, it is not just a physical practice, it is uh, beyond that. Um, I and uh, I don't believe it, is, it exists now, but uh, at some time we believe that it was there in the art form. But the literature, is it there in the literature anywhere? The uh, there is no, um, I mean, there are few literature and it is again, uh, they keep it as a secret uh, for their family. You know, this is uh, traditional learning. Uh, so they won't reveal it for everybody. And many of the uh, such kind of books are uh, uh, lost, not exist right now. Thank you, sir. For the question yeah. and of course for the answer. Um, uh, I, Girija has a question. Is there any rule to fix the size of the weapons according to the proportion of the body of each practitioner? Or is uh, it like a standardized way? I'm sorry. Uh, like, uh, she's uh, asking that uh, the weapons are they, uh, you know, they are they proportional to the okay. size of the, yeah. uh, the okay. practitioner yeah. or it's a standard size? Uh, the the each weapon has uh, its own sizes and the weapon measures by the length of your body or uh, it is called chan chan means uh, the distance between uh, the thumb and the small finger this is called a chan for example the short stick the small stick is supposed to be three span in uh, length three chan in the length and um, the long stick which they use it is supposed to be uh, the length of the forehead like that, each weapon has uh, its own uh, size proportional to your body mainly. Thank you, sir. Um, are there any more questions? Any comments? Oh, Sudarshan, sir, please go ahead. Yeah, if there are no more questions, I'll ask just one more question. Yes, yeah, sure, sir. Uh, so, uh, sir, as I type, there is this uh, marma kalai where yeah. um, there are some pressure points in the body where people yeah. say, can be used to fight the opponent at the same time on a very positive note. It can be used to cure ailments as well. Yeah. Um, and that again surrounds controversy, but it is very much possible given the acupressure, which is pretty famous today. But marmakala is not so famous. Marmachikitsa is not so famous. Um, is it, why is it not very well known despite its being uh, very? Uh, it's not very well known, but uh, still uh, we are using the marmagale. Uh, we use it for healing purpose. There are many people come here and then do the treatment. Even in Kerala, there are many people giving the treatment based on this um, yeah, pressure points or the marma points. We say marma points, it is similar to the pressure points. It is very famous. Even uh, people are coming from outside India too. But again, you know, now it is uh, the modern medicine has come and not everybody give that much importance to the traditional medicine system. But still there are people giving importance and then people taking advantage of that. It surprises me in the era of no microscopes or the possibility of seeing what is inside the body. Find out these, uh, oh, your voice is breaking. I'm not able to hear it. Could you please repeat it? I'm so sorry. So I was just saying that it is surprising that back then when there was uh, no idea of what's up microscope or people did not know what, uh, what what was inside the body, but they could pin down all the one, one not eight very uh, minute points of the body. 
How could they do that? If it's some few five six points, it probably is obvious. But then one not eight is too big a number. How did they have the vision to uh, map the body onto one not eight points? Now, does the literature say something about it, uh, or it was just trial and error? Even then, I feel it is very uh, difficult for anybody to let's say even Western yeah. science. I think is far away from doing any such uh, empirical. See, uh, it's a good question. Uh, but uh, again, uh, it's not just trial and error. Um, you know, we uh, believe that uh, we have certain powers or uh, there are uh, different skills which you can't explain, is, explain it through words. Uh, for example, um, my son is just uh, eight years old. He has a lot of story books. In one of his book, I was reading about the uh, special uh, type of uh, Tortoise. These tortoises um, mm, uh, come from the egg and it's in a particular seashore and they go back to the sea. Uh, after a year or many years, they come back to the same seashore and then lay egg. So that means they are traveling um, like uh, thousands of kilometers inside the sea and then coming back to this particular um, uh, place, the motherland. To lay egg again and then go back. So how the, the without the Google navigation they are coming and then getting it right. So these are the special I mean uh, the skills which you get it from your parents, or it is exist in the blood. Uh, we say this is the firmware of uh, uh, your body. And so this kind of firmware or the knowledge inside uh, access in the blood uh, is lost now, mainly because of uh, you're giving a lot of information uh, to your brain. When you give a lot of information about uh, information into the brain, you are losing the firmware of your body or your memory. So in olden times, they, you, they used to have their firmware more active and they could manipulate many things. Even in Ayurveda, uh, you can see there are a lot of medicine. Even each medicine, they know how to use it. There are some medicine, they use it uh, by boiling some, and they even tell you how many, uh, how long that medicine should boil to get extracted the medicine. If you boil the medicine, little extra, the medicine is uh, no more useful. If it is under cooked also, it is no use. And then they will tell you which uh, wood to use for cooking. So these are the knowledges they had. Thank you, sir, for the answer. Uh, just one more question, and then we can invite the chairperson of today's uh, talk. Uh, the question is, what happened to the bone setting part in Kalari Vidya? Uh, what? What happened to hmm. the bone setting part in Kalari Vidya? Uh, you mean, uh, is it still, are you asking me, is it still exist this Vidya or uh, you want me to explain about it? Sir, the question is this only, what happened to the bone setting part in Kalari Vidya? Is uh, Ms. Girija here? Ma'am, do you want to ask the question? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to, uh, yeah. Girija, ma'am, can you ask your question? Yeah, uh, bone setting was like vital spot uh, body massaging or marma vidya. Yeah. Bone yeah. setting was also part and parcel of kalari. Nowadays, yes. we can't see that particular area of kalari, which is mm -hmm. actually diminishing. So, I wanted to um, uh, uh, learn a little more about uh, how it becomes uh, yeah. extinct or, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I guess uh, mainly uh, because of, uh, you know, the, um, to set the bone, uh, there are many people doing it, uh, it still exists, but uh, the number of um, people expert into this is very less. Uh, it's like um, without um, seeing an x-ray, just touching uh, your body, they will tell you what happened to the bone and then uh, further details. They don't need an x-ray also. Uh, this kind of skills, uh, you know, hmm, uh, no more, I mean, I can't say it's no more exist, but uh, uh, no, you, I mean, not many people are coming for that 
and then many people are not learning and many people are not using it also so maybe because of that reason and now the modern medicine has introduced and then the influence of the modern medicine x-ray and all those things are uh, you know uh, replacing it thank you sir now uh, as we are running a little ahead of time i request uh, meera kumar men the chairperson of today's uh, talk to please uh, give some comments and also if any questions from her side meera over to you uh, thank you thank you so much sir for the very very lively uh, lecture and uh, the performance so i think uh, even just watching it gave me some chills and you know i think my body is aching just by watching it was so brilliant thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, i don't know if my words would be of any relevance because we saw a very holistic way of experiencing uh, through the body and mind where both are integrating and i wanted to ask you that uh, you know understanding calorie as a lifestyle i think it also might come from Uh, it might also have certain values like when we hear about what akambada about or then and about chandu all these stories that come as part and parcel of the kalari tradition uh, yes. we hear about stories of devotion of loyalty and all of this so is it something is is it something is there something about kalari that uh, also inculcates these values to some extent that's one question that i had and uh, another one was that um, in schools at least in kerala i know that uh, we have both art festivals and sports festivals but somehow i have never seen kalari getting mainstreamed into either of these maybe because it's both an art and a sport so what do you think about uh, this trend so these uh, are the two questions yeah uh, it's true that kalari is an art and sport uh, but um, uh, uh i mean we are trying to introduce it into uh, in uh, schools even uh, government has uh, also uh, giving importance to kalari pai and uh, trying to introduce kalari pai too it is still not come in mainstream mm -hmm. but uh, uh, compared to olden times it's getting more popularity and more states are taking kalari pai too uh, but uh, kalari pai need uh, to have more uh, consideration in the schools it is true yeah the question yeah, was about values sir about uh, values in clarified uh, yeah okay. values in clarified uh, um, again uh, you can't explain it in um, simple uh, words uh, but uh, the value comes while practice you need to experience it when you experience the value of the clarified uh, will be coming uh, naturally then uh, uh, you know this are qualified uh, is more uh, subjective not uh, objective i believe okay okay i think uh, that will be all sir thank you so much thank you very thank much thank you meera and uh, sir i don't have words to thank you today it was a mesmerizing performance by three of your uh, students including your wife so uh, thank, thank you, you so much thank sir much. for taking your time and uh, you know being with us today and uh, explaining us the art form so we thank you uh, on behalf of team csp and also on behalf of professor sangeeta men thank you so much sir for uh, taking some time out for our team and uh, presenting this friday lecture so i thank you and uh, i thank every every participants to join in each friday with us and uh, make our friday lectures a success so thank you everyone and the upcoming friday lecture is on ethical concerns and dilemmas and also challenges in uh, disciplinary practices this is uh, in reference to anthropology this is by professor gregory the de details and the poster will be circulated with uh, with our team's uh, publicity the team will be getting in touch with you on that so for today's session thank you so much sir once again thank you very thank much you every thank participants you. and uh, we'll see you next friday stay tuned with us have a good evening thank you everyone thank you, thank you very much